The focus of the blacksmith's work with horses was to change during the 20th century, mainly because of the increasing use of motorised vehicles, horseless carriages as they were called, but also because many horses had been sent to France at the start of the First World War, but very few had returned. In areas like Tweedale, the traditional ways of working with horses have not been lost, as many people keep and ride horses for recreational purposes. In fact, I believe there are more horses in the country now than there has ever been, and these horses need shoeing. So farriers like Ross Phillips, seen here shoeing horses at Kirkton Manor livery stables, provide the owners with a mobile smithy service. When we were at college, we used to tell you to shoe horses for protection. Correction and grip and the stud you see. So you're protecting their feet, you're putting a stud in, and if the horse has got an ailment, you can adjust the shoe to adjust the way he moves. So if he's got a stiff leg or something, you shoe him a bit wider on the back, you bring his legs out a bit, and support his body a bit. There's a lot to think about, isn't there? Aye, well that's the difference between a farrier's apprenticeship now and like say years ago. Uh -huh. Years ago there was no anatomy or nothing like that. Right. Now we're taught to shoe the horse, the whole horse, rather than just nail and shoe on its foot. Mm -hmm. See? There's a lot we can do with the feet to help the body elsewhere. <laughs> They're all made by machines with a mild steel just to a kind of rough shape and then once you've got to shoe the horse you just adjust the shoe to the same shape as the horse's foot. You take the horse to the smithy and we have a look at it, you go away and make the shoes for it when we take an hour and then another hour to the shoe the horse. It's like two, two and a half hour job. But now, as things have been on, cut it back an hour. Seven or eight weeks, you see the foots just start to come over the shoe slightly. He's ready to have his feet trimmed. Does he not the nail? The old nail? Quite a nail shoe. I've just got to take the shoe off. Alright. Alright. Still quite firm on the foot. That's the shoe away. And you can see the difference, the wear at the front of the shoe compared to the new shoe. It's ready to be. It's got to remove the excess hoof. This grows on the other seven or eight weeks. You can see it here. Now that's all the hoof trimmed off. I'm going to level up the foot. And the arch here. Ready for a new shoe. Put a little clip in here at the front. So just put that in the fire. That is the portable gas fire Years ago it would be a coal fire and something pump it behind it. Obviously the job's changed a bit so mobile. See the stud there at the outside heel? Oh, yeah. That's a tungsten a tungsten tip stud. Usually with the winter, the horses are on the road if it's frosted, oh, yeah. so they don't slip. As before, just clean it out the foot and then we'll take the excess hoof off and get ready for a shoe. The basic principles of shoeing horses has never changed for hundreds of years, but obviously as time went on, the training's got better and the techniques have got better, but the 
the basic idea is still the same as it was hundreds of years ago. Back to the front foot, get them shaped up. level with the foot, it's, got, it's touching all the way around. I just take the edges of the shoe, he's all stands on it with his other foot. Let's let it go. A lot quicker now because all the shoes are made for us. This is called clenching up. Fold the nails over. Helps keep the shoe on. Up with the nice and smooth, that's the finished article. Do the same on the back. I'm ready to watch. 